Psalm 44 O God, we have heard with our ears. Our fathers have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm save them, but your right hand and your arm, and the light of your face, for you delighted in them. You are my king, O God, ordain salvation for Jacob. Through you we push down our foes, through your name we tread down those who rise up against us. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes, and have put to shame those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually, and we will give thanks to your name forever. But you have rejected us and disgraced us, and have not gone out with our armies. You have made us turn back from the foe, and those who hate us have gotten spoil. You have made us like sheep for slaughter, and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a trifle, demanding no high price for them. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, the derision and scorn for those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughingstock among the peoples. All day long, my disgrace is before me, and shame has covered my face at the sound of the taunter and reviler, at the sight of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you, and we have not been false to your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. Yet you have broken us in the place of jekylls, and covered us with the shadow of death. If we had forgotten the name of our Lord, or spread out our hands to a foreign god, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Yet for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Awake, why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself, do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly clings to the ground. Rise up, come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. We neither know the author of Psalm 44, nor the time of its conception. However, we do know that this poem was used for public worship to give insights to the worshiping crowd. The psalm sings of God's great work among the people of Israel. So the psalmist is looking back at the history of Israel and praises God for his salvation. While remembering, the author brings the current sufferings and issues at stake to the Lord, fervently praying for God's resolution that is to come upon them. Verse 26 ends with this, Come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. This shall be our prayer as well this morning. O oh God, come quickly. Redeem us with your abundant love, steadfast love, unending love. God, your immeasurable love, would you come at us and redeem us? I find three interesting points in this psalm. Number one, is that the psalmist is talking about the known past, the history. It starts out in verse 1, We have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. Many of our listeners here can empathize with this. Yes, I have heard about how God was working for my parents' generation or for others around us. I've heard about it. God did some amazing things for his people from Genesis through Joshua and even further. You can witness the stories of God's direct intervention everywhere in the Bible. 
it is important to look back at my own history of walk with Jesus. Yes, when I was going through these difficult times, you were there. Yes, when I was hurt by someone, you comforted. When I needed something, you provided. We must learn to confess that without God's grace, there's nothing that we were made or achieved through our own works. The land of Canaan was not achieved by the Israelites. It was given by God's sovereign power and grace. It's by God's hand and His arm. This is why we must look at the past and history of our journey. Paul said, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. The second point that I see is there are unknown, ongoing sufferings. The history of God's grace in our lives does not exempt us from the sufferings of the current life. In general terms, suffering comes to us because of two reasons, and we looked at this before in Hebrews 12. Number one is that it is consequence of our sins. And secondly, it comes to us as a discipline for us because we are His children. This psalmist confesses that he is suffering and it comes from God. Verse 9 says, You have rejected us and disgraced us. Verse 10, You have made us turn back from the foe. Verse 12, You have made us like sheep for slaughter. 13, You have sold your people for a trifle, which means a thing or, or a little value or importance. The psalmist knows how to react in the midst of suffering. Verse 17 says, All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you. Verse 17 continues, And we have not been false to your covenant. Verse 18, Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. Likewise, though the pain is pressing hard, unknown and ongoing, yet we have the future assurance of God's promises. And our last point is assured future salvation. The psalmist prays with assurance in God's salvation, such confident prayer. This cannot be made if you are a person of flesh. It has to be a complete reliance on the work of God and His steadfast love. From verse 23 to 26, it reads, Awake, why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly clings to the ground. Rise up, come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Psalm 57, 10 says, For your steadfast love is great to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Now cry out to God with confidence. Just like a child demanding his or her parents when they want something, let us come with assurance that God's steadfast love is great, great to the heavens, and His faithfulness to the clouds. And why can't we not ask for God's intervention? O oh God, come and help your people. Come with your hand and arms. Bring your salvation upon us, and we go walk in confidence, and let that be your prayer this morning.